Was there anything in place to prepare for a season six that wasn't being necessarily in place for like a season four or a season five when the previous year was in operation? Or were you just doing what was normal at that point to set up the following season just in case? We were preparing just as though, okay. you know, just as in any other season. I mean, we didn't really go get that far down the road because to be honest with you, we don't really plan for the next season until that season is done. And our season was not done. Having said that, one of the things that we did consider, and this was an idea that executive producer Robert Cooper threw our way, was um, we had been um, uh, contracted to write a an Atlantis movie, uh, Stargate Extinction. And Rob suggested we should contact MGM and talk about maybe extending the season by two episodes so that we could shoot that movie within the production, uh, you know, uh, engine, uh, you know, that, that we had established for this fifth season. And in the unlikely event, we did not get a, um, a, 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 a sixth season, then we could release the movie as a standalone, which was kind of, you know, what was pitched to us. But if we did get a sixth season, then that movie could be the opening two-parter for um, uh, Atlantis' sixth season. And so that's something we pursued that really never gained traction, unfortunately. But, you know, in, in hindsight, I wish we kind of really pushed a lot harder because, you know, when, once, I remember going down to set and, and letting the cast know that we weren't coming back for a, a, a fifth season. But I remember sixth talking season. to, uh, sorry, sixth season. I remember talking to Rachel uh, Latrell, who plays, uh, mm. uh, sorry, Taylor, and uh, and telling her, you know, what we had planned for, for the movie and that it would be a Taylor-centric story. And, uh, and sadly, that never came to pass. I mean, we wrote the script, but uh, it was never produced. And this was, we have to keep in mind, at the point when when DVD sales were all the rage. Uh, you guys, I think this year, were looking at the performance of Ark and Truth, of Truth and Continuum, which my understanding was they did considerably well. They did do considerably bit well. However, between the time those uh, DVDs were released, those, those, those direct-to-DVD movies were released, and... We uh, sent in our script for Stargate Extinction. The DVD market had died. Essentially, the bar bottom had fallen out, and MGM decided to shelf the uh, production on the uh, on the movie. Just absolutely crazy. This is the first time hearing that uh, that Extinction was considered to be uh, a. a like a, a bookend in terms of, of mm -hmm. production for season five. I guess fans would have been none the wiser if season six had gone on and you guys, well, hey, we, we, we've got this thing ready to go. Let's let's slot it in. Yep. So how uh, would Taylor have, have been a central theme in season six, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, well, the story for, for, for Stargate Extinction... Um, if, if you know, I, I, I one of the things I, I, I should tell the fans is whenever I come in to do these live events, David tells me we're going to discuss season five, and I, I don't plan anything. So basically, this is just off the top of my head. I'm but uh, you know, from what I recall from the script, they um, Atlantis is going to make its way back to Pegasus, and en route, their engines. Uh, 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 you know, they they, they end up uh, experiencing engine engine sort of engine problems, and then <laughs> they end break up down. stranded between Pegasus and uh. Uh, and 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 the Milky Way in another galaxy, and they end up detecting a a power source coming from a world, and they go to the world, and ultimately, with the story that unfolds, ended up. Uh, um, laying seeds for what would be the Stargate universe story. Um, was it uh, uh, with the descendants? What? Ah, okay. Yes. So a, a common descent and epilogue. Common descent. Yes. 
epilogue. Okay, so the time up, travel twist that was used in season yes. two would have been the mechanism in. Yes, I yes, see. and so it was. It was a lot of fun, and and we would we, de we would be dealing with the descendant of Taylor. So Rachel would have played two roles, um, and one of the things that that you know really saddened me is it was such a great taught episode as well, where basically you have. Um, the present day Todd, who's locked up, who encounters a future version of himself who has designs on the planet and designs on Atlantis. And at the end of the uh, of the episode of the movie, um, he's basically in a position of power. He's about to kill uh, McKay. And Todd, our Todd, steps in and saves him and ends up turning the tables on his future self and saving uh, Atlantis for his own ends. And then at the end, uh, when, when they return to Pegasus, uh, Shepard uh, essentially rewards him by freeing him. And, and wow. they kind of, they part way kind of, uh, not necessarily allies, but, you know, having achieved a certain understanding. Yeah, because he's he's imprisoned at the end of the series. Yeah. Um, that's, that's pretty sweet, man. That was... <sighs> Would have been great. Yep. It would have been great. And, and I remember we also had, or I, I had an idea for another sort of time travel uh, John for the mid-season two part of that would have seen the team come back to Atlantis, but it's in Atlantis six months in the future that has been taken over by Michael, who has um, delivered a uh, um, uh, an attack in, in the form of a toxin that basically turns the... Atlantis personnel into hybrids. And so they are hybrids under his control. So we would have had hybrid versions of the, you know, ev everyone on Atlantis with the exception of our, of our team who basically comes through and discover Atlantis has been taken over. Again, that was just a kind of a basic premise, but it, it, you know, I think it would have been a blast. So how would you have brought Michael have back for that? Ah, uh, that, that's uh, another, uh, yeah. He's uh, dead. Um, well, well, so we no think really Connor Trinier never believed fiction. it. Yes. Yeah. 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 Connor's yeah. like, he's not that stupid. He's yeah. not, he's not going to check himself, you know, yeah. put himself in, mm -hmm. in check by flying into Atlantis with a puddle jumper without having an option elsewhere. There was always a way. I mean, in the back of my mind, whenever we killed off characters for days afterwards, I would, you know, go through this, the string of possibilities mm -hmm. and I would have always have a list of, okay, this is how we could bring the character back. And I, I know I did the same for Michael and I, I'm not sure what my list is, but uh, <laughs> I would have, the plan was to pull it out when it came time for discussions. Well, it, and season five is has no shortage of those kinds of nods, particularly I'm thinking Robert Davi. Thank you for those answers. That's, that's fascinating. Thanks for watching this clip from Dial the Gate. You can find the full live stream shows on our YouTube channel or visit dialthegate.com for the complete schedule. See you on the other side.